Yeah, in our study, we use generative AI to create completely new antibiotics. So many of your viewers have used generative AI both to create images as well as text. In our case, we trained an AI model based on chemical screening data we conducted in our lab where we used 40,000 different compounds, applying it to a bacterial pathogen, looking to see which exhibited antibacterial activity and which did not, use those data to train the model to learn what might make for a good antibiotic. And we then challenged the model to design new antibiotics, ones we've never seen before. And it turned out that the model was really quite good at doing this. We were able to synthesize some number of these and then test them against multidrug resistant bacterial pathogens. And with a very high rate of success, we came up with very new antibiotics, two of which we're now advancing towards the clinic. Yeah, what is the next step here? These drugs are still sort of several years away from being prescribed. So what happens now? What happens now is we're teaming up with a nonprofit that we help set up here in the United States called FairBio. FairBio's goal is to take the most promising molecules from the Antibox AI project and advance them preclinically to clinical trials with human patients. We're now going to be teaming up with FairBio to make sure that these are the strongest drugs possible for going after the infections, and then looking to see can we raise the appropriate funds to actually advance these to trials through to approval, serving then to expand our arsenal of antibiotics that can go after these very problematic infections. More broadly, how groundbreaking could the use of artificial intelligence in medical research be, particularly in this sort of area of, of drug-resistant um, of, of drug illnesses? I think it can be really transformative in that you know, the AI models are really effective at recognizing patterns in complex data. And as such, we can use these models to really harness the complexity of the biology of the pathogen as well as the complexity of the chemistry of the drugs and integrate those two to advance completely new molecules towards the clinic. And I think in this way, AI really gives us a significant advantage in the battle of our wits against the genes of the superbugs. And I should say that I think this advantage of AI is not limited to antibiotics. I think it could extend to antivirals, antifungals, antiparasitics, as well as more complicated human diseases such as cancer, neurologic conditions, and metabolic diseases. It all seems and sounds sort of very futuristic, but how prevalent is the use of AI in this space already? It's early. So it's just beginning to really become popular. It's been limited in part for the lack of right AI talent in the biotech and pharma space and the lack of data. But I think with the renewed interest in AI over the last few years, particularly from things like ChatGPT, I think pharma and biotech have recognized that there really is a lot of value and that AI is becoming an integrated tool in the process. It's not the answer to all the challenges we have, but I do think it's expanding our capabilities to come up with completely new drugs to address some of our biggest challenges. Are there risks to the use of AI in this space, do you think? You know, could it mean fewer jobs for scientists in the future? Could, could AI be getting it wrong at times? You know, I think AI certainly will be getting it wrong at times, as we do as well. And I think that's where I think the human in the loop will be important for the foreseeable future. I suspect that AI will probably end up leading to the loss of some jobs, but I think it will create other jobs. I'll maybe give an interesting challenge and concern is that with this ability to design molecules for good, you also have, unfortunately, the dual use where you could design molecules for bad. And so, for instance, in one of our studies, we develop models to predict the toxicity of compounds, so to ensure that they wouldn't be toxic against human cells. And one can actually, unfortunately, see that those kind of bad actors out there could also use those models to try to find compounds that are really toxic to humans that could be problematic if we don't have the right countermeasures.